Thank you, Megan. Uh, Scott, I, I'd like to move move this. Okay, I was just getting ready. Resolution one three zero seven three seven. I want to move for approval. It's been moved. Is there support? It's been moved and supported. Discussion. Yeah, I I'll have start some. with. Oh. I'll start over here first and Go just work my way around. Go. Go first. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to say um, this master plan, this has been an experience. This has been a true experience because personally, that's where I'm speaking from. I have had an opportunity to work with a diversity community of people that care and love this city. My most heartening experience in this whole planning was when I attended my community college for one of the community meetings. And I overheard a gentleman tell another gentleman that he was homeless, but he had an opportunity to be a part of something that was happening in the city, even though he didn't know where he was going home to. He had an opportunity to be a part of something that day. And I just sat there. <clears throat> He didn't, you know, I didn't say nothing to him because a lot of times people don't want you to know their circumstances. And no one in there would have known his circumstance if he hadn't have spoken out. And I heard him. He was at the table right behind me. So I said that to say this. If you didn't have your input on this document, then it's shame on you because there were meetings after meetings after meetings. There were flyers after flyers after flyers. There was word of mouth. Megan and her committee, they did everything in the world to get this community to come out. So if you didn't come out, and you have a problem with this document, it's shame on you. But I'm excited to be a part of history that's being made in the city of Flint, hopefully tonight. And there's no shame in my game. I'm happy about this document. It's not the perfect document, but it's a plan that we need. And we're gonna just roll for it if this plan is adopted, and I'm going to make sure, because I'm going to stick and stay, and make sure Mr. Mayor, Dane, and whoever else, because I'm going to sit here a minute, and they're going to do something with this plan for all the people in this city that we live and that I love. So I thank you, Megan, all, everybody. I thank you. I'm done. Councilman Bolden. Right. Yeah, thank you, um, Scott. I also want to just thank the Planning Commission and the Steering, um, steering Advisory Groups. Um, you guys have done a fantastic job. I've enjoyed two and a half years that I've sat on this. Um, we've had disagreements on certain things, um, but we agreed to disagree. But we were able to come to a point where we have something that I think is a framework for the future for the city of Flint. I'm just extremely happy with um, some of the revisions that were put in there. Um, the one thing that I just want to make sure that we have clarification on, and you know, and, and they actually put it in here, you know, we, we had a lot of people talking about we wanted to bring farm animals into the city of Flint. You know, and that thing right there was one of the biggest roosts out of everything that I heard. Because under, um, and, and they have it here, under the, the Right to Farm Act, um, we're over 100,000 people. By us being over 100,000 people, we cannot have farm animals within the city of Flint. And what I like is um, you actually notate in here that with um, strong, strong um, 
strong revisions, even if we do fall under the 100,000 in the 2020 um, census. If we have those strong revisions in here, that still will not happen. And that was one thing that I'm extremely happy of because, you know, like I said in some of those meetings, um, my grandmother had chickens, and I was scared of them. I love to eat them, <laughs> but I was scared of them coming up, and, you know, and I know how chickens are. And, and I know my, my colleague, he knows that down there where, where we grew up at, there was a lot of chickens and, around there, and we know how they smell, and we know how they act. Um, so I was just really, really happy about that. Um, the second thing that I was really excited about was the recommendation that, that Quincy, he, um, he talked about and about the $200 million um, for North Side or, you know, for disadvantaged areas. And I was glad that you talked about the urban renewal because that's one thing that, you know, in 1975 I think we had a plan that never was implemented. And that was based on urban renewal. And I can remember, you know, my father um, growing up always talking about, you know, um, not having equitable investments in certain areas. And when the highway came through, it really just took out uh, a real thriving area, the old St. John area. And with this, I think, um, with this investment of looking at trying to raise this money over the next 20 years um, and investing $10 million in these areas, I think was going to be uh, – um, paramount in being able to change the mindset and the community as a whole. I'm extremely happy about that. And then the last thing that I'm really happy about is, you know, my, my pet peeve, I, I burst and feel how um, it's a historical site and that area. It went from being a green initiative or a green area to being a community open space, and we're going all the way over to Lee Street, which I think would be fantastic, especially with the Hamilton Health um, um, center being there, and that's a, a jewel on the north side of Flint, and just the possible investment that we can have in that area moving forward. So um, I just want to commend you guys on doing a, a heck of a job. The consultants were great. Um, all the input that we had, they listened to it. They came back. Um, if it wasn't quite right and we gave them something else, they went back and tweaked it again. So um, I just want to say um, job well done, and I'm extremely happy with this um, with this document. Yes, it's not perfect, um, but it is something that we can use as we move forward, and, and when we need to revise it, we can do that. But um, I'm very happy with it, and I'm a firm 110 percent in support of this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Nolan, Councilman Freeman, Councilman Waller. Yes, thank you. Um, <coughs> to Megan and her staff and to Robert Wesley and all the other commissioners and to Councilman Nolden and Councilwoman Poplar, fantastic job on coming together and presenting this to the city of Flint. I am extremely pleased with the process of how this was introduced to the city and, 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 uh, and then got engagement of individuals throughout our city to participate in this process. The process has tremendous integrity and I just commend you all on doing that. Even the most vulnerable individuals in the city had an opportunity to be a part of this process. As Councilwoman Poplar has spoke about with the homeless, I too had witnessed that and also uh, children in foster care. Uh, Megan and her staff uh, arranged where uh, the older youth in foster care, we have a youth board here called Michigan uh, Opportunities Initiative, um, were interviewed and gave their feedback uh, as part of the, to the master plan. And uh, they were excited about doing that. And they had a lot of information they wanted to share from their foster care experience. Um, prior to my election in 2009, I was a part of a process uh, for some years of putting together a master plan in certain segments of the city. And Patrick Rouse was a part of that where he chaired the Flint Park Lake and master plan was uh, adopted and approved by the city. I chaired the Flint, uh, the Northeast Village Citizens District Council and uh, Irma Cooper had chaired the Smith Village uh, Citizens District Council. And each of those areas 
uh, had a master plan that was adopted and approved by the mayor and the city council at that time. The city has spent 45 plus thousand dollars on each of those master plans. And uh, when I got elected to council, one of the very first things that I did was to put those uh, CDCs on the agenda because I have a passion for economic development and looking at the, the possibilities of what we can do with the community and economic development is, was exciting to me. And uh, as a result of that, we had uh, the Smith Village project to move forward and currently have 50 plus houses that are built. You will have my same commitment and passion to move this master plan forward. Uh, because as I read through it, as I've been a part of the master planning processes and uh, listening to the feedback and sharing the feedback in the fifth ward from the residents, uh, you listen to it, you, you engage them, you implemented their feedback into the master plan. Uh, some uh, comments uh, that was given, you taken into consideration and did the best you could in meeting the needs of uh, those individuals. So I just want to commend you on doing an excellent job uh, on this master plan document that is ready for implementation and you will have my full uh, uh, commitment to make sure that this master plan will move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Neely? Yes. I, I, too, I do, too, uh, want to echo uh, the congratulations from my colleagues to the Planning Commission uh, and you, too, Megan, uh, for doing an outstanding job, for trying to make sure that everybody was included in this process. But I also want to thank uh, the Planning Commissioner from the Sixth Ward, Mr. Rob Jewell. Uh, thank you, Rob, for making sure that we were fully engaged in the process and when I made those late calls to you at night trying to get some of these things interpreted, uh, I appreciate you picking up the phone and making sure if you weren't there to pick up the phone that you gave me a call back. But I do want to recognize this, that this is a living document. It's been two years or, or better in the process, and we're going to tonight give birth to the master plan for the city of Flint. And with this living document, it's going to require some nurturing, it's going to require some love, it's going to uh, require some care. And it's going to require all of us, not only the elected officials, but the community to embrace this plan and move forward. But with that said, I do want to address Mr. Johnson and his concerns and also the concerns of others about the 8th Ward being vacant. Make no mistake about it, that this, this council did everything in its power to make sure that that seat would have been filled. We made the request to then the emergency manager, Mike Brown, to allow us the opportunity to fill that seat. That request was denied, but we do have to move forward, and I just wanted to make sure I address, it, uh, address you, Mr. Johnson, so you wouldn't feel like this council ignored uh, your pleas from that podium. Uh, I'm going to support this document tonight. I'm going to give it all the love and attention throughout the time that I'm going to be here as an elected official and as a resident of this community to make sure that it's going to give uh, a good future to this community. And also, we want to alleviate some anxieties about the uh, police auxiliary. Uh, that police auxiliary or auxiliary for public safety is not going to put anybody out of any job. It's going to enhance our public safety forces inside the city of Flint. Uh, 